Okay, what can we do with this pit? Well, I can see pretty quickly that there's three screws here. I can see some little tiny screws on this part and another screw on here. I reckon, ooh, and some screws here. I reckon we're gonna take this apart first. Yeah, let's start with that bit. I had some trouble with these screws before. I was unsure if I had the right screwdriver. Hmm. Let's try this one. Make sure they're pushing it hard. Give it a twist. Looks like it's turning. Here we go. I'm gonna. Sometimes it hard. It is hard to tell if you are turning the screw or if you are just spinning your screwdriver, tearing apart the the driving part. A bit of pen can help you tell which part's turning. So I'm skipping. Still not doing very well. I'm not happy because that's starting to tear that one apart. I'm gonna have a go at this one. There we go. That's coming up pretty well. And now these screws with their really big flat parts attached to them I don't know quite how. It's sort of like a, an integrated washer. Um, but these are holding these bars down. And these bars are being held against some springs. So there's a, a spring in here. So between this screw and this spring. And yep, they're all on springs. And can I get that high enough to come out? Looks like we're not quite there. That's not easy to turn. Oh. That's definitely not the right screw. Screwdriver. Let's see what else have I got? It's always best to use the right screw, the right tool for the right job. Sometimes you've got to use one that's sort of just close. This one gives me just that little bit more control. It's a Leatherman Squirt. Good company. Now I wonder, I'm not 100% sure. I don't know. This might be a JIS screw. It'd be weird that there's one JIS screw among all the rest, but JIS have a slightly pointier design. I think I'm just imagining things. It's probably just another Phillips. So here's what the screw is supposed to look like. It's supposed to look pretty and straight. This is what happens when you wreck it with a screwdriver that's not quite right, it is torn up. And it's no longer easy to turn. And that can get you really stuck. But I think we're going to be lucky and we won't need to worry too much about that particular screw. If we can get this one out. Oh, this one's starting to get torn to. Cool. There we go. I've managed to scrape myself. That's a decent scrape. That's unfortunate. I'll grab my band-aids. Where do I put my band-aids? So, as I was trying to turn this screw, and I was using a screwdriver that wasn't very good for it, it wasn't quite the right size and shape. Um, I slipped, and because I was pushing really hard, um, I scraped a whole bunch of stuff across my hand. It would have been really nice to be wearing gloves at that point in time, but I wasn't. And now I've got cuts and scrapes. That's all right, it's not too bad. So I can pull that bar out now. There's a little spring hiding in there. 
Now this bar is still not quite ready to come out. That's disappointing. So I'm having a lot of trouble with that one. Let's see. I'm going to try these screws, see what happens with these ones. These ones are coming much more easily. We've got, is it going to come free? Ah, one more screw to undo. It's interesting the different kinds of screws that we've been retrieving. We've got some with big flat heads, some with smaller rounder heads, and some with very blocky cylindrical heads. Pull those back in. There we go, okay. So that comes off nice and easy. We've got a connector over here, so we'll pull that out. I connected these things, so nice and distinct now. Got this one which is still hanging on by these parts here. Mm. Retrieve this spring. Yeah, there we go. It's another spring that was holding the bars. Interesting that these bars have a little bit of springiness to them. I wonder if that's related to preventing vibrations. Oh. Really like to get that screw up. Whoa. We've got another two screws here that I can undo. Might help us get things undone. Go back to putting it on the bench rather than holding it in my hand and driving it into my other hand. There you go. Just can go with those screws. Now, if you have a magnet handy, there you go. It can be quite good. Lifts the screw straight out. By attaching a magnet to my screwdriver, the screwdriver becomes magnetic and it can lift the screws up. Okay, so that's coming out. Oh, still fairly attached. What if we undo this screw here? There we go. Interestingly, my screwdriver is still magnetic even though I've taken the magnets away. It's a lingering effect of exposure to a magnetic field. So that all comes apart. Here's the linear drive. So we said that this is uh, well, this one will be a stepper motor. Um, when I had this motor before, I was able to apply a voltage to the two pins and it spun. This one, I can see one, two, three, four, four wires coming in here, four pins here. A little label saying lead free, which is nice. Nice to know there's no lead in this one. It's got four wires going into it. This is a stepper motor and it requires a special controller. You can't just put some voltage in and expect it to work. So I'm gonna put that aside. I think it's pretty cool, this, this rod that drives things up and down. Um, this is the part that gets driven up there. This is a spring that helps interface things. That over there. Now, can I get this to disengage? Hmm. I have a pair of pliers here. Those pliers might help me disengage things that don't want to come apart. I might have another go at that screw. Better turn it the correct direction, eh? Some people, when they're undoing screws, they talk about lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. I like to think about a clock. And so a clock goes tick, 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 around this way. So the clock sticking around this way. When they're putting the screws in, they're putting it around this way. And when they're taking the screws out, or when we're taking the screws out, we're reversing time. So we go back the other way. Now, you see, if I slip now... 
were a lot less likely to injure my hand than when I was holding everything up. Let's do it a little bit at a time. It's kind of starting to calm. Maybe. I'm using a lot of force on this because I've managed to strip the strip the screw a lot. And that force is making this a bit dangerous. So I'm gonna stop now. That's disappointing. I reckon it's the wrong screwdriver. That's a very much screw head. Oh well. A pair of pliers, hopefully a bit of force. Now when I twist here, I can see the bar bending a fair bit. I know that bar's fairly strong. So if I twist it and it suddenly comes out, it's gonna come out quite fast. I don't know if I really want to have that anywhere near my face. There we go. So that's why it's important to have safety glasses on. Um, a little bit of plastic has broken off there. And that came flying out. But I've now separated the part that I wanted. I beat it. All right, we've got these two pieces remaining. I'm gonna start with this one. This is the motor that spins the CD on the platter. Um, it's, again, a different sort of motor. Where did my first motor go? Got one, one motor, two motors. There's my third motor. Here we go. So this motor, I could apply power to these two points and it would spin. I told you that this motor wouldn't do the same and this motor also won't do the same. It's a brushless motor. What we can do with a brushless motor is we can pop the top off. So a brushless motor doesn't have brushes. Funny that. Um, on the inside, whoops. On the inside of this motor, there are brushes. Now the brushes don't look like the brush that you brush your hair with. They are a part. I wonder if I can pull this apart. Might not work out too well. The brushes allow us to have the way that the current flows change as the part inside spins. Because there's a part inside, these wires go inside, and as it moves past, different parts are touching the wire. They brush against each other. It's a bit, bit different to what I'm doing with my fingers, but... A standard DC motor has brushes inside of it. The brushless motor doesn't, and that's because the part that the current flows through is all on the, on the fixed part, and the part that spins is just permanent magnets. And we can find that out by giving this a twist, because it's not held on very tightly. There we go. And we can see the inside of the motor. So this part is called the rotor, because it rotates. This part is called the stator because it stays stationary. And if I get a bit of metal, we can see that this is a circular magnet around the outside. And I can feel it as I go. It doesn't feel consistent. I can feel the this metal thing um, pushing from magnet to magnet. It's very hard to to show you. So you might just have to take apart a brushless motor. I reckon I could almost count how many different bits of, uh, I mean, so it's one continuous thing, but the magnetic field changes. I can feel it change. If I had, what, what would I need? I had some, Iron sand, maybe I could uh, see the magnetic field by the way it moves the magnetic particles. I can hear something rattling in there. I think that's part of the bearings, maybe? I can't get any part of this to turn. Let's see, is that top part magnetic? Oh, the top part's magnet as well. I'd be interested to see if I could take this apart further figure out what is making the rattling noise. These bits here might be part of what holds the CD in place. 
that's a grippy rubber bit. Okay. This part's pretty cool. We've got a whole bunch of magnetic coils. And when we run electrical current through those coils, they create a magnetic field. And if we change each one, so maybe this one, this one, and this one are all north and these ones are south, that will push the magnetic north and souths a little bit and then we change again. So we keep changing what the magnetic field on each of these is. And that's how we spin it. The details of how a, a brushless motor works, uh, not something I'll get into in full detail this time. Um, but yeah, that's a cool to see the inside of. And I can tell that's a magnet too. So we've got a few magnets going on there. Put that aside. Went down to this one part to take apart. So we're down to this last bit. And I think I said before that this is the laser sled. So I call it a sled because it moves forwards and backwards on these two bars. Uh, there we go. Or it did when it was all put together. And by moving backwards and forwards, if you imagine you've got your CD, it can see any part of the CD and then you can rotate so any part goes past it. So it can see from the inside diameter to the outside diameter, the inside part to the outside part, and then you spin it to get all the rest of the parts. We've got more little screws here. We've got this, this sort of uh, eye looking thing. Looks like the front of a camera maybe. It's a, what we call a lens, and it bounces up and down. I can see in the side, little wires there. That's a, a very, very um, precise alignment bits and pieces there. There's also this connector. So if I push this part, oh, yeah, how do I do this? Ah, there we go. So this bit uh, doesn't push, it flips up, and that lets that connector out. This is a whole lot of little wires, all side by side, make a ribbon cable. It's a bit different to a standard cable where the wires are actually side by side in a circle. These, they're side by side flat. So what have we got here? We've got a um, light little bit of metal that's holding over top of everything. We've got some screws. What should we start with? I think we're going to start by taking off this metal cover. And it's not very strong at all. It bends very easily, so I should be able to do it just by wiggling it. There we go. That wiggles off and we can see what's inside. I think I should probably bring my camera much closer down. So this, of course, is a bit hard to tell exactly what's going on. Um, but this, I'm saying, is a the heatsink block for a laser. Um, and you can see the three pins coming out of the back of the laser. Uh, this is a reflective, re refractive prism. Another re refracting part. So the laser comes out. Bounces off that, bounces off that, and down through to the lens where it comes out. And on this side here, you can see some very fine wires that are connecting to it. We'll see a bit more of that soon. These interesting little screws, which might be adjustment screws, the two small ones. Um, and over here, let's see how if we can get enough light in there. Um, I think that that is the sensor that detects the laser returning. So the laser hits the CD and comes back up and bounces off here. And it passes through this part, or some of the light passes through, and strikes 
the sensor in there. We might get a better view of the sensor later. So now we're going to do a little bit more disassembly of this one remaining small bit. And handy to have the screws stick magnetically to my screwdriver. This one's covered in a bit of glue. It's going to be a real pain. Skip that for a second. We get the last screw out. Well, not quite the last one, actually. There we go. Um, I mentioned it before, but looking up, there's a couple of Wikipedia articles. One that covers all the different kinds of heads that you can get for screws and the different reasons that there's different heads. Um, and the other really interesting Wikipedia article is the one about the Whitworth thread and the introduction of uh, national standards of having all the threads the same. There's now a metric standard, which is probably what we're using for these. The Whitworth was a British standard back in the day, um, but it was very important in early industrialization. So we've got these two. I don't think these are attaching anything to anything. I think these are little screw heads that allow you to adjust things. Uh, which we do not really need to adjust. I can see there's some glue here, so I don't think this is going to come apart as easily as I would like. Um, might need a little bit more space to use some force. There's a little metal clip that's come loose. go a little bit of twist in the right place it's come up um, so we can see hmm, all sorts of interesting things going on here um, see the way that we've got a circuit board here that's connected to a circuit board at 90 degrees I've just broken that off and we've got the connector still got the connector We've got AK8929. I wonder what AK stands for. Hmm. Not sure. We've got bits and pieces. We've got the lens. We've got the reflector. Now, which part should we do a bit more on first? I think I'll put that one aside for the moment. Um, pull this out. Now, this is got them all scratched up now that I'm using pliers to pull it out but we can see all sorts of pretty colors and reflections there we go it's I think effectively like a a half mirror it allows light to bounce back from the CD to the sensor so the laser comes through this and then the light comes back and gets redirected through this part. Oh, that's broken. You see, I've just ripped it apart. It's probably glass. Got to be careful with that sort of thing. Put that straight into rubbish bin. So that's now broken in there. If you can see where I have broken it away. It's not so good. I don't like breaking stuff like that. I ooh, we got a little integrated circuit down here. We got laser that we wanted to get to and the sensor that we wanted to get to. So we haven't quite gotten to those things yet. Let's see a bit of twist. Let's get a screwdriver in there to twist a little, with a little bit more control. Okay, this one will be good. There we go. Get right into that gap there. And here, just prying the board up bit by bit. We can see the connectors there. Um, connect the top to the bottom. Just, oh, there we go. Got some more movement. 
Um, let's oh, lift it there. There we go. One of the connectors torn that connector there. It's a bit sad. Uh, this connector looks like it's not going to be able to be unplugged gently, so I'm just going to peel that away. See that tearing off? Okay. Cool. So, we have 2508. Who do we appreciate? Um, we've got a controlling board here. We've got more tiny, tiny capacitors and resistors. Now, those capacitors or resistors, it is hard to tell. They're not labeled this time. A bit harder to know. If I was a betting man, I would say the ones on the left are capacitors and the ones on the right are resistors. The capacitors just look the same color as most of the capacitors I've seen, and resistors, likewise, just judging by color. Bit of a guess, bit of a gamble. And there's this cool circuit board held at 90 degrees to the rest of the circuit board. I think that looks pretty cool. And this thing stuck to it, bit transparent. I can see through, and I can see a bit of stuff on there. So I reckon you shine a laser on that and read information. I reckon that's a sensor. Now, my theory was that this is a sensor over here as well. So I might be imagining things. Maybe, I don't know why they'd have two sensors. And there seems to be a, yeah, there's a, we've got a lens here and it's almost got a cover stuck over it which I'm scraping terribly with the screwdriver definitely a laser diode where's the other laser diode there should be two in here I'm sure wonder what that is that 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 could be stuff let's have a bit more of a play around See what we can move. Now this is cool. Look, you can see a, another thing in there. Small rectangular thing. Definitely getting to the stage where I'm breaking stuff and risking sudden popping and stabbing myself. So I need to be very careful because I don't want to have to get out some more band-aids. Ideally, ideally, taking apart a CD drive shouldn't require band-aids. I really want to see what's in here. If I break these bits, maybe I can get that part out. There's a bit of glue in there that's going to make this hard. Normally it's a bit easier to get to these. A lot of these drives are a bit easier. There you go. So you can see we've got a little square thing in front. Take that off. Pop that down. Mm. Very hard to see what's going on here. You definitely see three pins. Let's take a bit more of it apart. Or oh, breaking that. Hmm. What about this metal covery bit? Oh. Broken a bit, broken a bit. Making a bit of a mess at this stage. Got a circular thing. I don't know how much of the laser diode we're going to get to see on this one. I don't know if I can take that much further apart. So this will be metal, which is useful because lasers can get hot, the, the laser diode itself. Looks like it's pretty well glued in. All right, let's see what else we can take apart. When you've got a part that gets hot, 
and you have it pressed in a tight metallic thing, it's often because it's serving to get the heat away from it. We call that a heat sink. Break that part out, get a better view. Now that looks cool. That's some sort of light based sensor. I might try and get that with the other camera. Do we have anything else left in here? We've got a bit in there. So a clip that I can, there you go, force that out. That's not doing anything for me. What is that? That's just a metal holder thing. No, I think we've stripped that part. Oh. Let's grab the other camera. So we're just looking at the two things I think look like sensors. Um, this one, can't see a lot, but the fact that I can see through that translucent part on the top makes me think that it's a sensor. Yeah. Okay, let's get that into focus. Oops. There we go. So, I reckon that's a sensor to determine, basically to read the laser coming back from the CD. This is the eye. That's my theory. Man, can you see those tiny fine wires coming off the center into the outer pads? So each of those, so there's a, the square in the middle and then those figure eight sort of looking um, bits around the edge. Man, so tiny. So there's all these little bits around the edge. The eights. Need a better pointer. Let me see. So these shiny, shiny bits. And then you can see tiny little wires running from the square in the middle to the shiny bits out here. And then those shiny bits will probably connect to these bits, which connect to the cable, which used to connect to the rest of the circuit board. So I think we're down to the last piece to take apart, and that's the lens assembly. Now I think this is going to require pliers again to get a bit of get it a bit more open, um, bending it. Part. There you go. Bend that out, and we'll bend this out. Oop. See all this bending stuff's the dangerous part. Now you can see that it's no longer bouncing around like it used to, but you can start to see these very fine wires that run to the to the lens itself. Uh, these are magnets next to it. Let's see. Focus. So we've got magnet and a magnet. We've got wires and starting to see. See the orange bit? That's a coil. So that coil, when the circuit needs to, it runs an electric current through the coil. When you run an electric current through a coil, you create a magnet. And when a magnet is next to another magnet, depending on how the two magnets are configured, they will either attract each other or they will repel each other. Oops. And so, using this principle, you can make very small, very rapid changes to the position of the lens. And the lens is sort of like the nozzle of a hose. It's the last little part and it's the bit that points the laser at points the laser at the CD. So we've got two little magnets here. I should be able to pull those off without too much trouble, maybe, if I'm lucky. We can use those next time we want to make our screwdriver stick to screws. If I don't just stick the screwdriver to the magnet. This is a very good way to stab yourself with a screwdriver. 
Um, so I'm going to give up on that particular task. Uh, you might be able to see if we can get it to focus. Uh, these are the the coils. Um, might take a bit of video with the other camera of this little assembly. So this is the laser assembly, sorry, the lens assembly, and you can see the two coils, or there's actually three coils going on here, I, I think. Um, that looks like a coil in the middle going around, and then there's this coil, which wraps around this way, this coil over here, and coils on the other side as well. You see that's just very fine copper wire, and it's probably enameled. Uh, to keep it from touching uh, the other parts of the coil. So very thin, a little bit of insulation. And these are the wires that were running out to it. And they effectively form almost like a, a spring that it can move, move around. And that is the lens that the laser comes out. Well, I've made a bit more of a mess than I expected, um, but I have taken it apart. I've found all the little bits and pieces. So what should I take apart next? I've got another CD drive. So this is just CD, no DVD. It might be more easy to get to the laser, um, to the laser diode on this one, which would be quite interesting to see. Uh, I've also got an Xbox drive, which is probably actually about the same. Um, so next time we can take apart the Xbox drive, it's got this weird lump in the bottom. I'm very interested to see what that is. It makes it a real pain to store. Um, the other thing that we could do is try to use this motor to make a robot of our own out of the stuff that we've taken apart. You can let us know in the comments what you'd like to see next time on Unmaking.